Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to do a little bit of work on this uh, Craftsman convertible power head here. This thing's about 15 years old. And this is obviously not the first time I've ever worked on it. But what I've got going on is that the primer bulb won't pump up. So we're going to see if we can figure out what the cause of that is and get it fixed quick and cheap. Alright, here's the problem that I'm describing. It's got gas in it. When I pump the, pulp, the primer bulb, nothing's happening. It's not drawing any gas into the bulb and pushing any through the carburetor. Since the fuel lines are all good, that tells me that there's probably a blockage in the carburetor. So that's what we're going to start with and see if that's the problem. But yeah, it's doing absolutely nothing. So we're going to start by taking all this off getting to the carburetor, taking it apart, and seeing what's going on in there. The very first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to get some of this grease and oil off the engine and the power head itself, and I will be right back once I get that done. All right, I've got everything cleaned off a little bit with the uh, grease and such that was on the outside. I've clamped the power head to the table so it's leaning this way. Fuel pickup is on this side on this particular one. So I just kind of wanted the fuel to run away from that. So when I pull the fuel lines off, I just won't have fuel just running everywhere. First step is going to be to remove this plastic cover. There'll be two screws on this particular model. They are star bits, but you can also use a plain blade in it. This particular Craftsman has a three position choke lever. Choke, partial choke, and run. What you'll do is you'll move the lever over to this slot, which is the choke position. That way you can just pull the cover straight off. That'll expose the air filter. And then the uh, choke plate here that is mounted to the back of the carburetor. So that'll be full run there. That's partial choke, and that's full choke. I'll wipe some of this off. And again, you have basically the same screws holding the carburetor on. They're star bits or plain blades. There's two out. Notice that they're a lot longer. They go all the way through the carburetor and to where it mounts on the engine. This top one holds the choke lever as well. So be sure not to lose any of those parts. There's a little washer on there, right here, kind of a little bent washer that gives you the ability to still move the choke lever once you tighten this screw down. So I'm just leave all that together with the screw through it so I make sure I don't lose any of the parts. Once you take that off, that'll expose the back of the carburetor. You need to get a little small Phillips screwdriver and loosen this screw right here that holds the throttle cable. If I reach up and pull the throttle, you can see that cable it just came right out of there now. So that's loose. The carburetor is actually completely loose now from the engine except for the fuel lines. All right, pay attention to where your fuel lines go. Mark them if you have to. I've replaced the fuel lines on this before, and one of them is black, so I know the black one goes on the top. So I won't have to mark mine. But you'll probably need either a screwdriver to push, push the fuel lines off, or maybe a small pair of needle nose pliers, or they may just pull off with a little bit of force. I'll go ahead and put on a glove on one of my hands here to keep from getting gas all over me. And I'll use this hand basically to hold the carburetor parts while I'm cleaning them, spraying them and everything. So the line just slid off very easily.
Oop, a little pressure on the tank there. It's a hot day. So I'm gonna open the yeah, little tank pressure build up on the tank. There we go. Like a gas pump there. Shot gas like five feet at least. Alright, I'm gonna put that little hose so it uh is sticking up in the air, keep fuel from running out of it. And I'm basically done with the power head for right now, so I'm going to get my pan over here in front of the camera, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, you see that this is a Walbro carburetor. Common to a lot of small engines. What we're going to do is we're going to take this apart, and we're going to clean it and see if that solves the problem of not being able to pump any fuel with the primer bulb. All right, first step, plain blade screwdriver, R Phillips screwdriver, right there on this side that says Walbro. Take that screw out. This will be the side that has the uh, throttle lever on it. It's gonna actually bumps up against this throttle stop right here. That's how you would adjust your idle. So, it just comes right off. You see your uh, two gaskets right there. I'm not going to take those off of there. What I'm going to look at is this little screen right here. I see a little bit of debris on that, not much. It's kind of what I was thinking might be stopped up, but there's, there's not a whole lot of debris on there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take the other side apart. Again, you can use a Phillips screwdriver or a plain blade on these screws. This side is the side with the diaphragm in it. It actually opens the needle valve to let fuel into the carburetor be sucked into the carburetor. Oh, that just fell right off. All right. So this is the diaphragm here. I can feel that it's being pushed back on by the spring that holds the needle in place. That all feels okay. Again, there's a diaphragm and a gasket on this side, and the diaphragm itself goes to the outside, so it'll go closest to the plate that uh, holds it all together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this off of there without tearing any of this stuff up. Just going to use a little razor knife. It's not stuck at all, so that's good. Now it could be stuck so bad that you tear it up getting it off of there. You want to be very careful, especially if you don't plan on completely rebuilding the carburetor. You can find uh, rebuild kits on eBay for most Walbro wall carburetors for like $10 or less shipped to your door. This little metal disc right here with the little nub on it is what presses down right here on the retainer for the needle. The needle is right here. The needle does appear to be moving up and down, so that is a, a good sign that it's not stuck. I'm going to use a Phillips screwdriver here to remove that. Just holding my finger on it to keep it from popping out. All right. Now when you take this out, it's going to be a spring underneath it, so don't lose the little spring. There's a the little lever. Now, there's the tiny little spring. And then your needle is going to be right up in here. And there's the needle. Like I said, the spring is very tiny. And if it gets away from you, especially in grass or something, it's going to be gone. 
All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some carburetor spray, and I'm going to spray out all these passages that are now accessible since I've got the carburetor taken apart. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to clean this screen off very well. So let me grab that, and I'll be right back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a little pick and take this screen out. Just reach in there and kind of hook it on the side. Okay, sorry about that. My camera cut off. You're just going to use a pick to pull that screen right out of there, and the screen will come out and just lay there. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a bristle off my wire brush here. Just going to stick it through that hole. We go around. It appears to be very clean. I can see straight through it. See my finger on the other side. So now you're just going to use carburetor cleaner and spray in all these holes. Careful how you're spraying. Stuff will spray back in your face and it burns. Always use uh, safety glasses. Full face shield would probably be even better. I'm going to open up the butterfly here with my hand and spray in there where the jets come out. Okay, that's sprayed out. I'm going to clean the little screen here. All right, now we're going to put the carburetor back together, basically doing the opposite of what we did to take it apart. Use a little rag and dry off this. If you've got an air compressor, you can blow it off to dry it. You can wipe it off. Not that big of a deal. I'm going to dry off the surfaces. All right, let's put this thing back together. We'll start out by reinstalling the um, needle. And that's the trickiest part, probably. You have to have the needle. It's going to go down in the hole there. And you have to have this little pin that holds the little lever. You're going to have to have it and the little lever. Thread that through there. There'll be a little dimple here on the bottom side that goes down towards the spring. Once you get this ready to go in, go ahead and get your little spring. Put it back down in the little seat where it goes. And you're going to have to try to put all this together without losing anything, getting everything lined up. You're going to basically come in from this side hook the little arms underneath the, the needle. Get the spring lined up underneath the little dimple and hold it all in place. Now, it went together fairly easy there. Just my little pin's a little, little off center, so I'm just going to push it just let it drop into place. You can get your screw that holds that bar in place. Fill up screwdriver. And tighten that back down. There. That's done. I'm going to push on it just a little bit. It's moving freely. Seems to be working just fine. And since I'm working on this side, I'm going to go ahead and install the uh, diaphragm in that gasket. I'm going to dry that off a little bit. Normally I wouldn't spray carburetor cleaner on this, but I was thinking more about having everything in the frame and not what I was actually doing. Just lay that down. The silver side is going to go down towards the internals of the carburetor. Then you're going to have this little plate that's going to go on. Plate's vented on one side. It doesn't really matter which direction that hole goes in. This allows the back side of the diaphragm to move unrestricted without any back pressure. Get your four screws started. Then with your Phillips screwdriver, you're just going to tighten these up. Don't over tighten it. The carburetor body is made out of aluminum. You can strip that out. And then you got way more problems than you had to start with. Like I said before, you can get all these parts, the needle, all that stuff in a kit, usually on eBay for $10 or less shipped. Just have to find out what brand carburetor you have and which model. 
and order the kit. Now most Walbro kits will work with probably 20 different carburetors, so take your time and search for the right one. I'm not doing anything with this. It's all pretty much open behind these two gaskets. I don't believe there's any blockages or anything behind that. Move your little throttle arm over so you can lay this down flat on there. And everything's usually got a little, little pins on it that'll so drop into some holes so it'll fit. Once you lay it on there right, it's in place. I almost forgot to put the screen back in. All right, don't forget your screen. Drop it in a hole. And use a um, screwdriver, your pick or something, and push it back in there. Don't poke a hole in it now. Use a uh, flat surface as you can. And just push it back down until it touches the bottom down there. And it will stay in. Now put your uh, piece back on. Start your screw. I had to notice that before I got everything back together. All right. Tighten that screw up again. Don't over tighten it. It's nice and snug. And that's put back together. The screw did fall out from over here where the throttle cable goes. Go ahead and start that back in its little hole here. All right, got that back together. Let me move my camera back down to, to the power head and we'll put this back together. Okay, make sure your gasket didn't fall off. Make sure it's still in place right here. And mine is. Soak a little of this gas and water out of there. Okay, got my carburetor. It'll basically only go on one way for everything to line up. Got my throttle over here. My top fuel line goes on here. And my bottom fuel line goes on there. So that's the way it'll go. Let me go ahead and hook, connect my fuel lines. Let's slide those back on. That's usually a relatively easy task. Slide my throttle cable back through the hole as I line this up. And I'm not going to snug that up until I actually get the carburetor mounted. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the plate, the choke plate, with that top screw. Slide it back in. Line it up. Start tightening it down. You're going to want to make sure that little washer back there, the little bent up one, stays lined up on the shaft there. And before you start tightening, you're going to want to move that up into the upright position. All right, I'm not going to tighten it completely yet. I'm going to go ahead and line up the bottom hole and get that started. Make sure everything's lined up before you snug anything down. In many cases, like on this one, these screws actually screw into plastic. So definitely don't over tighten them. You'll feel when it's tight and stop. All right, now you see my choke lever works like a champ. Get my small Phillips screwdriver and tighten the throttle cable back up. Now you can reach in there and grab that with a pair of pliers if you'd like. And this is something that doesn't need to be over tightened. That is done. Fuel lines are back on. The choke is in a closed position, which we need for sliding the cover back on. The air cleaner in here is very clean, so I'm not going to worry about that. It looks looks fine. So line the cover back up. Slide it on. Grab my two screws that hold these on. Get the first one started. Second one in place.
I'm going to go ahead and tighten this side up, and then I'm going to tighten the other one. Again, this is screwed into plastic, so don't over-tighten it. You can tell this um, power head is old, like I was saying. The muffler is actually exposed metal, and it does burn if you touch yourself with it. All right. It is back together. So now let me move the camera around to the side here and let me see if it will pump up. Okay, I've got this um, tilted over the other way so the gas is actually on top of where the fuel filter inside the tank is. So let's see if this will pump up. It's going to take a few times because all the fuel had drained completely out of the lines from where I had everything apart. But there we go. We've got fuel flowing through the lines and we have fuel in the bubble. Once you get fuel flowing like that, you know that it is actually reaching the carburetor and it should fire up. So let's see if it will. Okay, we'd already pumped the bubble. It's still on choke from where we put the cover on. Got the on switch on. Give it a little bit of gas here. Give it the half choke. That was it. Simple carburetor cleaning allowed me to pump up the fuel and it runs like a champ. I appreciate you watching this video. I hope you found it informative. I hope it helps you keep your lawn equipment running and have a great day.